Today's client has been inspired by my channel to take better care of her feet and wants to learn more about how to do her pedicure at home. She has waited months to get in with me and traveled from Washington, D.C. to Michigan for a service. And today I'm going to give you tips to do your pedicure at home, so stay tuned. She doesn't do anything. Wow. Mm -mm, she doesn't do anything. Like, she just has naturally pretty feet. She doesn't have to have polish. That's how pretty her feet are. Oh, that's you nice. Know? They're short. She has the short toes. Oh, okay. Like the real cute toes. I said they the cute toes. That bad and nice. So, I have been trying to work. I think consistency is really the key. Because um, I've the, the first step after soaking your feet is to apply the cuticle kind of remover really before you start to trim okay. your toenails. <laughs> first step to success oh, yeah, with your Amazon. pedicure at home is to purchase yeah. the best pedicure tools on the market, which are my yeah, brand yeah. and can only be purchased on my website. Don't go to Amazon looking for the pedicure tools. You will just get knockoffs from companies trying to ride my coattails. So please purchase the authentic professional pedicure tools from my site where you can choose from several different kits to make it easy and even get an amazing travel bag for easy storage and access. So how many times at home have you taken care of your toes? I would say since watching you, I became kind of almost obsessed with it. So I was uh, at first doing it maybe, uh, maybe twice a month. Okay. And then when I knew it was getting closer to the point, I said, let me just not do anything. Right. So we can get everything are you done. still using toenail clippers to shorten your and toenails? You These are toenail your, nippers. Uh, They're easy to use, toes, give you more maybe. control, prevent <laughs> nail splitting, and creating jagged edges. Her toenails aren't too long right now, so I'm not taking too much off. Yeah, she's like, that's a major difference. Yeah. That's so nice that you talked to your grandma about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, she knows I'm weird about my feet, too, because I was really self-conscious about my feet. So, yeah, that's how, maybe that's how that started. I don't know. Who knows? I don't remember how long ago we booked this. We, uh, maybe in the summer, maybe? Okay. Probably in the summer. It had to be the summer. In your kit, you will have the stainless steel nail file. Sometimes I use the disposable nail files to refine the free edge if my tools haven't been in the disinfectant long enough or if their toes don't seem to be flexible enough to move out of the way if I need to. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take good care of you. I <laughs> will. Feels like you got a little callus on the end of that tone. Yes, I do. And it's on the other one as well. And I've tried to work on it. Because that toe is longer. Yeah. It's hitting the end of your shoe. Sometimes it's hard to get a half size bigger just to make room for one exactly. toe. If the whole it foot is. then moves around. Yeah, I tr it's, it's a headache. It really truly is a headache. So what's the weather like in D.C.? When I left D.C., it was it was kind of misting, kind of gloomy, the rainy thing going on too. So it's pretty. It was the same all the way up here. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is not. It was really a nice ride coming through the mountains. Much needed after being kind of cooped up. You're having an adventure. Yeah, I'm definitely having an adventure. Beautiful. So where are you staying at tonight? I have, <laughs> when I was supposed to be looking. So yeah, everything really ended up being last minute. Okay. I was right. <laughs> Before you start to use the cuticle pusher, apply one more drop of cuticle remover to each toe so that excess skin comes off easily. My cuticle pusher has a beveled edge to slide under that adhered skin for easy removal. I did see the different hotels up there too. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited. 
yeah I'm sure there'll be availability especially on a Wednesday it's not like it's a football weekend or anything <laughs> So is the town always this quiet? Um, well, school hasn't gotten out yet, or maybe they're about to, yeah, they're just letting out. So, yeah, during the day. Okay. It is. It's not Way a back. huge town. You know, the city of Celine is only about 8,000 people, I think. Oh. So it's Everybody small. Yeah. Seems very laid back. Yes. It's nice and quiet Except in this <laughs> yep so I'm sure where you live it's kind of crazy a lot of energy a lot of people it's a lot of people overpopulation <laughs> it's a lot it's busy do you it's live in the busy. city or yes. the suburbs I live in the city okay it's a busy place Do you work in the city? No, I do not work in the city. No. That's good. So, in doing your own pedicures, mm -hmm. it is quite challenging because you're not able to really see certain things and you will find on the other foot, you could probably see where there's been some uh, trial and error. Yes, I saw on that big toe on this side that where some of it was. Oh, okay. You will see here that I've actually had that side uh, actually cut and uh, the nerve killed on that side. Okay. But I never went back for that side to be done. Okay. Or the other side because it was just too painful. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, so that is, the ingrown thing has been a nemesis of my life. So what would you suggest, like, how would you, what are some tips that you could give? For so the best tip is to make sure there's just space in your fold. This is your lateral fold or your nail groove. This is what, you know, but you see this white skin when I pull this open? Can you see that? Yeah, I do. So this, mm -hmm. you just get excess buildup down in there. Mm -hmm. And then you just don't have a lot of space for your nail, so your nail starts to move. So if you keep that cleaned out and then mm -hmm. keep the nail mycosis product on it, mm -hmm. it should soften. I mean, your nail is kind of really curving mm -hmm. straight down. But as long as you can get that part of the nail to grow up into this spot right here, because that's probably where it starts to get sore. Mm, exactly. And to keep all of this clean, you shouldn't have any more problems with it. So how often should I be, <clears throat> not really obsessing about it, but tending to it? So um, I would say every other week. Just use some cuticle remover, and this is the ingrown sidewall cleaner to pull this skin out, and then just one drop every day. Mm. And then that'll keep the skin nice and soft. It'll moisturize the nail enough mm -hmm. so it won't be so hard that's when it's scooting up into the top here, where mm -hmm. it's the really sore spot, it'll actually push the skin down and the nail can slide up into it instead of being so hard. The skin's hard, the nail's hard, and it just like runs Party. into it. It's like, ow, it just hurts and hurts and hurts and hurts. So the nail mycosis and nail polish, is it still effective? Mm, well, yours, you don't have a problem with any kind of fungus. So, um, you can wear nail polish and still use the nail mycosis because you're wanting to moisturize this skin okay. right here and it, it'll soak right down into that nail groove. Okay. So that's fine. Now, if you had like a lifting toenail, it wasn't attached or um, athlete's feet in your toenail. So I'll just gonna tip your foot up a little. There we go. So what's your favorite thing to do in the city? 
Not everyone is going to need to use an electric file and mini diamond cone bit, but those of you who have really sticky excess cuticle that won't come off easily with the remover and pusher, you can use this tool to buff it away. Yeah. Actually, in reality, and welcome to the ride. <laughs> yeah, I I love being at home. So much you can do at home. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really do much in the city. Did you used to? You can see the material I'm buffing away is not yeah. flying up into Have the air like you see in a dry pedicure video. Okay. You don't want to inhale the dust. You want the skin to fall right down onto the toe. So if you're a nail tech and not building a client base because you're giving a dry pedicure, I hope you consider taking my course, which will give you the continuing education you need to build a client base and be able to get listed on my client referral network map. Clients are looking okay. for you. Let them know in the comments what state and city you live in and that you want a certified meticulous manicurist in your city. I did a survey last year asking clients if they prefer a salon pedicure with soaking the feet or doing it dry and it was an astounding result. I'm going to show you the results. It's 97% prefer soaking the feet. Nice. What are their names? Well, we have Loki, Simone, and Tutu. Oh, cute! <laughs> Simone and Tutu are brother and sister. And Loki's my oldest. Aww. And they run the house. They run me. That's nice. There's my baby. I have three dogs. Oh, wow. How yeah. do you do three dogs? Oh my goodness gracious, it's hard. I used to have two cats for 18 years and then okay. when they passed away we decided to get dogs for the boys. Aww. And um, yeah, we have three. This is the first time I've been in a multi-cat household. Yeah. This will be the last time. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it's fun, though. It is fun. It's just a lot of cleaning. It is a lot of cleaning. Yeah. Um, more than I could even imagine. But uh, they were not supposed to stay with me, Simone and two. But after love and nurturing, it was kind of hard to let them go. Mm -hmm. Especially to an unknown um, future. They're just so cute, but their cuteness factor is like 1,000. Oh, and their badness factor well, that's not gonna say they're bad, they're just into everything. Yeah, I said, God knew what He was doing because <laughs> they're just so cute. <laughs> like, no, don't tear up my shoe, right? So cute, but you're still picking up after them all the time. They're funny. I will show you my babies. What kind of cats are they? This is the best little secret for a pedicure service to remove all the little imperfections. These are my mini buffer blocks. So don't forget to add these to your order when you get your pedicure kit. They come in three colors, but I think right now we're still mailing out pink. But they also come in orange and purple. If, if you open my phone, it's all toes and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, not until I had the multi cat household that I realized just how much personality they have. Oh yeah, they're like people. Let me see. And their their uh, how they really operate, how they function. Yeah, they and have they a language. They really do. You have one? Uh, no. Oh, let me know when you find one. <laughs> but 
Let's see. Here we go. So I have to give you their journey. This is when they came to my house. That's how they looked. Oh, let me see. Oh. They were. People always like this. Yeah, they were in a certain shape for so babies. So sweet. And um, they were very fragile. So I was making formula, um, bottle feeding them. They were very, um, very sick. Did they lose their mama? Uh, actually, a friend of my husband found the, the litter, um, and there was no mom. Oh. So it was one, two, three, I think it was like five of them. And they have grown into such beautiful babies. Let me see if I can find them now. Cuddly. They are. And let's see, where's my oldest? And my oldest is like a mama boy. Back to Is there a little bit of sibling rivalry? Um, I would say two is more territorial. I think he wants to be the alpha cat. Although uh, Loki is the oldest. Oh, Loki is, I think, six. And Simone and two, I think, are. Are they kind of two this year? And so, Loki is my gentle giant. Uh -oh. He's a 16 pounder. And, and it's so funny because the, the female. All right, we'll straighten all the way out. <sighs> and then my all black cat was named Dodger because you could never catch him when he was a kitten. <laughs> Well, it was so funny because when we when the kittens were found, we were actually at a, a friend's house when his husband found the kitten, and we named those we you know, former like um, colleagues classmates, and we named all the cats, and so actually two had a twin, and they're marking the big patch. They had them on opposite sides. So oh wow. Named, I'm, Thing one and thing two. <laughs> so when I ended up keeping them, I just said, well, I'm going to name you two, too. <laughs> That's so sweet. I have a sister who has a chicken named number three. Oh, really? <laughs> no, yeah. Number three. Yep, that's its name, number three. Number three, wow. Yep. Omelet and Freddy and number three. Omelet. <laughs> oh, Those are the baby. chicken's names. <laughs> wow, that's cute, though. This week's most liked comment is from Stacy Hartshorn. She says, your explanations are so good for each step and delivered with such a soothing tone. Hope you do realize that your approach to some scary situations is so compassionate, not making anyone feel embarrassed. Thank you so much, Stacy. I'm so glad that my compassion shows through in my teaching. All nail techs should be compassionate and caring with their clients. When you take care of the client, all goals for financial security fall into place, but when techs only think about generating income unfortunately it shows through and the client can sense that
Yeah, well, they, um, and then they overcharge everything. Yes. You pay for the convenience because yes. you can get things, you know, expedited. Yep. But yes, hindsight is fun time. Everything costs more on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, um, I'm super annoyed because they're using my name in an ad. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then once people get to the page, it's not, the product. it's not my products. Right. It's not my brand of stuff. Wow. So it's like bait and switch. Like they make people think oh. that they're selling my stuff, but they're not. Oh. My pedicure uh -huh. tools are the best you will find. They are professional grade, made of high-end stainless steel, and we ship same day and next day if you order late at night. So please help me keep making videos by oh, purchasing right. from the person who is inspiring you to take better care of yourself. This is my passion, and no other selling platform has any investment in your well-being. We might be able to trim that little split off a lot too. So what you yeah, see there, I think, um, I think I have buff in there. That's why it's so shiny still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause I had wanted to go with like, just a pretty, just a clear, no polish. But it didn't quite work out because I have that white patch. Right. So will that be something that will grow out eventually? So sometimes you can get a white patch like that just from a vitamin deficiency. Sometimes you can get it just from injuring the nail. Just like when you bend plastic, mm -hmm. you'll get that really white mark on plastic. Mm -hmm. So that could be it. Or sometimes you can have, it's called white superficial onychomycosis, but I do not think that that's what that is. And sometimes you can just have uh, really dehydrated nails, just nice and dry. That leaves that little mark. Oh. Mm -hmm. I feel like the I, I fight with uh, an end zone in that corner. On the pinky? No. Oh, on the big toe. No, okay, big toe. gotcha. And it's like I can I can only get it enough to relieve it. But right. Then weeks later, it's right back at square one. On this side? Yes, on that side. Yeah. Because like I said, I always end up digging and probably causing trauma. Yeah, your best bet is just to get out enough of the excess skin and then keep it moisturized so it grows up. And you don't want to never trim at an angle like this. You want the nail to come straight up into the nail groove. So people misunderstand what cutting the toenail square means. Okay. Um, and that is straight up. So it's perpendicular to the top of it mm -hmm. and not cut at an angle mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So as long as these nail grooves come straight up, you can still shape it where it attaches and that's still considered square. It's not the top of the nail they're talking about when they say square. It's the sides of the nail. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever really explains that. Okay. And when somebody has something that's bothering them in their sidewalls, the first thing that they do is mm -hmm. cut it at an angle. And then way down here, 
you've removed nail and then this nail starts to pillow up into the space that has just been cleared away and now when this nail starts growing it has to recut the nail groove and get past that little bubble of skin So there's also a condition called micronychia. And it's just when, it's a fancy word for tiny toenails and it's just congenital, you were probably born with them. So these two toenails are just a tiny bit smaller and it's usually hereditary. So does anybody else in your family have really tiny toenails on their pinky and ring toenail? My mom does not, my no. grandmother does not. No. But I don't remember my father's feet. So okay. That's questionable. <laughs> but those are the kids that I've seen, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. So they'll probably always be that one. Yeah, they're tiny. They won't, um, like, grow wider. Mm -hmm. Better than the macro Nikia, which is really big. Really big. So one's micro and one's macro. So instead of having a tiny toenail, you have a great big one. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, like some people can even have toes that look like the big toe on their smaller toes. Yeah, like really big. Really big. One of the most interesting videos I found um, of yours was when you were doing your husband's mm -hmm. <laughs> and the things that can be underneath our nails that we don't really know. Yes. But that was really interesting. Yeah, he gets he has super deep nail grooves. Mm -hmm. And he is uh, neglected. But it's his own fault because he never makes an appointment, so we're always squeezing him in. <laughs> Wait a that's hubby. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I make him go a, a couple of extra weeks just so it's really good. <laughs> so it's been probably a couple of weeks since I last taken care of my feet at home. And what you get, I'm like, hmm, I can never get that effect at home. So, to get off as much skin as yeah, I have? Yeah. So, like, am I not using the product on long enough? Um, well, the cuticle remover really only needs about 60 seconds. Okay. Yeah. It's probably just your tools. Probably so. Mm -hmm. You need to get the authentic, meticulous manicurist <laughs> <Not>. tools. <laughs> okay. They do work. Clearly. <laughs> Let me know what your biggest pedicure concerns are so I can address them in an upcoming video. And if you're on your mobile phone, click the word more under the title of the video to see the description with the links and click the word comments to leave a comment. Yeah, see this white spot so deep. Mm -hmm. Usually white superficial on ecomycosis. Mm -hmm. It comes right off when you file it. So this is more likely a deficiency or injury? That looks more like a, like a, it's called buccinicia. And it's 
just a white spot and it's usually vitamin deficiency, yeah. So what vitamin would that be? Oh, I can't remember right now. Maybe vitamin D? Uh, you know what, that sounds about right. Oh, she did a blood test and said yeah. that you were deficient? Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is. But they're harmless. They're just unattractive. Yeah, they're just not. Uh, you're like, why are you in my nail? <laughs> Go away. Kind of fashion, as a of yeah, the toes always tell you something. I had a client tell me that um, the doctor told her to tell me that I saved her life. Yeah, yeah because it had been, but she should have gone the first time I told her and she didn't. She was like, no, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, oh, it is. Her toenails started to quickly pinch all of a sudden. Yeah. And I said, there's something going on. Like, this isn't normal. You should really go see your doctor. And she just kind of blew it off. <clears throat> and then one day she came for her pedicure and she had like fluid underneath her cuticle area. And I was like, I can't do your pedicure. You, I said, you have to go to urgent care right now. Right now, I want you to not get your pedicure. And her son drops her off. Mm -hmm. I said, and have him drive you straight down the street to urgent care and she was like are you kidding me I'm like I am not kidding you have to go so she went and she had to have emergency surgery mm -hmm. to have a vein replaced in her leg oh, wow. yeah they said that she had no circulation Oh, that's from, wow. That's amazing. I didn't know it was that detailed. You know, because you know, the teeth are that detailed. Yep. Because if you go for a checkup, your doctor doesn't say, hey, let me look at your teeth. No, they don't. You know? Swelling, yeah. So, question mark. Mm -hmm. Some are uh, nick or some nail beds just naturally dark or is that also a sign of something that could be going on? So you know how you can get hyperpigmentation and it gets really dark, like mm -hmm. this spot here? Mm -hmm. That can happen under your nail bed too. Mm -hmm. So if you get an injury in just a little area of your nail, mm -hmm. when you grow and those dark stripes grow up your nail, mm -hmm. that's called um, melanonychia. Yeah. Now sometimes it can be um, you know, something else. It can, it can be like a melanoma in your toenail, but most of the time, especially if you have it on more than one toenail, it's very unlikely that you are going to get melanoma at the same time in more than one toe. But it's always good just to have your dermatologist look at it. I thought you were going to tell me this is the toe that was giving you the problem because this is yeah, where you're, the side of the but on this side. It gives me problems on both. Oh, okay. And more so, I always feel it on this side. Okay. That's why I always end up digging in that side. 
Yeah, this side needs to reestablish its nail groove. Because when that part of the toenail way down there starts to grow up, that's what makes it sore. So we gotta clean that up. So the pressure could actually be coming from the other side, not so, or is it possibly both sides? Um, and it's probably from the way that you're walking mm -hmm. is where you're feeling the pressure on this side more. Okay. But you really just need to let the toenail grow mm -hmm. and do its thing and not cut any nail out of here anymore. Hobbies. Mm -hmm. COVID, I love to go. I love to travel, so that's why really driving really wasn't the issue. Um, that's really my biggest thing. I love to travel. I love to just go. Love to go have an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Little secret hobby is I like to write. Oh, nice. I, um, yeah, I like to write. Whether it be like, like a little thought of a poem or something, or maybe like a little short story, that's my secret hobby. Nice. are too private to really share. Right. And she's like, it's really, really good. That needs to be shared. Like, no. <laughs> but her thing is, if you have a talent, why not share it? Right. Yeah, sometimes that's a hard thing to do. Because like I said, it's my secret hobby. Degenerative. And there's possible retrolisthesis. What's that? When the vertebrae slips in the opposite direction. So oh. you know how we normally have that curve? Uh -huh. It's kind of bulging backwards. Yeah. So unfortunately, it's, insurance can be so tricky. If things are not worded right, uh -huh. you know, they're like, well, they suggest the MRI. Having the hardest time. To get an MRI? To get an MRI. Oh my goodness. Um, but yet they're always wanting to push them back. So I'm like, no. No. I got the shot in my back. It did absolutely nothing. Oh, no. So Go that's see a chiropractor. I bet they can get it back in place. I was going to acupuncture, actually. Yeah. Um, but now that's, you know, that's really not even in the picture anymore. So my, actually, ironically, he mentioned, he's like, you need to get um, massages. And I said, massages? Yeah, and stretch your hips. Not that you can bend your knees. Gosh, and it's like you feel like something's about to snap, and it's like they're not hearing me mm -hmm. about this. Yes, um, I. So they told me that I had an extruding disc that was super close to my spinal cord, mm -hmm. and I would sit down in this chair, and it would, oh, and I couldn't move. It was like, and clients would be like. Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you okay? And I'm like, oh, give me a minute. Oh, and I'd have to like get up like a pregnant person and try to like reposition and then sit back down very carefully yeah. so it didn't go in the wrong position again. So for me, I can sit down, but oftentimes it's when I'm trying to get up. You know how sometimes you have to scoot forward. 
that's when it's really yeah or sometimes i can't relax my body mm -hmm. like just totally just like uh because it's uh a very sharp yeah pain. i yep. doesn't care so look up something called uh posterior pelvic tilt it's when your hips get rolled under and it's supposed to go backwards okay. you know it's like when your bum is supposed to look all out like and perky this. yeah uh -huh. but it gets like you're tucking your tail between mm -hmm. your legs and there's some stretches that you can do to get it to come back the other way okay. yeah i picked up a box it was a desk and it was like 70 pounds and I picked it up off of the floor of my garage to bring it up two steps into my house and when I twisted something just slipped and I was wow. like oh I couldn't I could barely walk for like wow. six weeks it's mm -hmm. horrible I remember the first time I had one of those spasms and what it didn't happen like that um, all the time but I remember the first one I had when I had moved back to D.C. It was on Thanksgiving, my first year back in D.C. And I went to go get a pair of shoes that I had underneath the bed. And when I went to go get back up, I couldn't get back up. I was stuck in, like, the knee mm -hmm. hand position. I could not move. Mm -hmm. And I was happened to me before, too. Up, I couldn't. And they could never find anything wrong then. And that was, like, in 04. Yeah, it's like a slipped disc. And here we are at 21. Yeah. Yeah, I've been struggling with my low back for about three years. And right now it's like probably about four months ago, I started getting progress towards mm -hmm. going in a good direction. And that was with the massage therapy? No, that was with the uh, posterior pelvic tilt oh, exercises, the, the exercises and stretching my hips and the front, mm -hmm. your hip flexors in the front. Okay. And then, yeah, and massaging my glutes. I have big knots back there. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, on the to-do list. <laughs> yeah. It's time consuming, but you have to put the time in to, to reverse the problem. No, I mean, that sounds like hope. Because now I'm seeing an, um, a surgeon, and I really don't think that that's a good idea. Uh -uh. No, I saw... Um, I used to get, it was called radio frequency ablation, where they would go in and heat up the tissue and it, it interrupts the signal of the nerve that sends the signal of pain to your brain. So is that painful all within itself? Um, I, it's tolerable, mm -hmm. but um, it worked for a little while. And then I had some steroid injections and um, they put like a block in my spinal cord and all kinds of stuff. And then they were like, you know, you really need to have your lower back down there fused. And I was like, that's it. I'm sick of this. I Nope, I am not doing this. I am going to make this better. I'm definitely going to look into those exercises. Like, I am way too young to be hobbling around like a 90-year-old. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Sentiment is all good. Couldn't wear my cute shoes. <laughs> I'm like, no. Heels this is happening. Heels are a no no. And it's so sad because I have, I'm a shoe holic. Oh, maybe that's my other hobby, shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I cannot wear these shoes. And I just refuse to part with them because they're just so gorge. But I can't wear them because they tear my back up. Yeah. I just consider them for pretty. <laughs> It's funny because I would go somewhere, I have my flats on and my, my heels in the car. <laughs> I try to get into the building to take them off, put my flats on. <laughs> and I've even tried going down to low heels. It's to the point that low heels are not even tolerable. Yeah. Yeah, I do wedges. That's a good, because it angles you in a way. Hmm. 
What do you do for work? Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> That's what I do for work. Honestly, sleep. <laughs> you get no. paid to do sleep studies? No, I wish. <laughs> that would be ideal. That would be an ideal job. <laughs> no. Actually, I had lost my job at the end, actually on December 31st. Right in the midst of the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah. Downsize. So, so Fingers crossed, I have a job offer. Cool. Good. Oh, yeah. Nice. And that would be, um, it would be space. Okay. So let's see what happens. I'm sure you'll get it. Yeah. Fingers, toes, I need a whole other job just to keep my animals on. <laughs> I'm seriously. Is DC expensive to live in? Yes, yeah. ma'am. It really truly is. The cost of living is really astronomical here. Really high. And I'm, I'm not sure if you guys go through that here, but <sighs> gentrification is real. What is? Gentrification. So it's, DC used to be a city that I would say it was very well blended, and now it's it's become so expensive that the average person really cannot afford to live there. Oh, so it's almost like they're pushing those people out. Right. When we were in Sedona, and I said, you know, appreciating the art, and I was like, there's so many different artists here, and we were on a tour, and the guy said. Yes, and they used to be able to afford to live here too. And I was like, oh, that's sad. It's like they sell their art there, but they don't make enough to afford to be able to live there. That's the unfortunate part. Um, and it's happening a lot. A lot of the average income people are really having a hard time living there because it's so expensive. And they're building all these super expensive condos and apartments that the average person really cannot afford. That's crazy. And even with the affordable housing, it's still really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunate. Yeah, for what they charge for apartments, people could be paying a mortgage. Yes, that is very true. It's, it's so easy. sad because just to, you know they don't must not just have the down payment to be able to get a mortgage, and it's like it's a rip off, really. Yeah, when you divide your payment by your square footage. It's like three hundred dollars a square yeah. foot, yeah. and it has zero interest or amenities, or you know, it's not yeah. doesn't have any high end appliances or countertops or anything. So not cool. <laughs> not fair. tool that's similar to that mm -hmm. and so I didn't like the way it felt when I was trying to do it mm -hmm. so maybe I'm just definitely doing something wrong yeah you have to slip it in mm -hmm. let the spoon edge of it because it's got a little hook on it mm -hmm. slide underneath the edge of the nail mm -hmm. then you tip it outwards and push up and then pull forward
means that you've got a little spike poking you. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to trim that. I think that's the reason why I end up angling, trying to get it, and I really don't know how to. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a takeaway you got from this video. Write it in the comments, and don't forget to save this video or add it to your own playlist so you can rewatch all your favorites at a later time. Did your grandma check on you and make sure you got here safe? My grandmother is so cool, so awesome. So I had my little moments and she's so strong. She can stay on the phone with me to get through my little sleepy moment. Aww. Yeah. So she knows I'm here. Good. She's going to get polished today. It's always fun to show you one of my polished colors in my line. So you see no so overall you see no fungus in the nails right mm -mm. so that means the product really does work because i had a superficial fungus in the nail yeah, so, yeah. well they look good nothing to worry about So, biggest question, how long to really leave polish on the toes? Um, as long as you're using a good base coat, mm -hmm. it does not, I mean, I've left polish on my toes for six months. Really? Oh yeah. I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have any time to spend on myself. So who does the manicures, manicures? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Yeah, I put it off as long as possible. And then I just trim my nails um, when they get long and I just leave the polish on. Really? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't chip. So moving forward, going forward from today, the only thing that I really need to do is a foul Maybe just foul, not even so much as cut. Mm-hmm. Straight across. Yep. Well, you can you can shape them like in a little smile. Okay. To get off this tip of this little corner, just do not cut down into the sidewall to remove any kind of nail. Okay. Which one do you think? I I am so partial to this one. This one? Yeah. Okay. I'll take that one. Sister Power Pink. Yeah. It's pretty. And at home foot soaks, are they necessary? Because I remember you saying that you don't have to go to the get pedicures like every other week. You don't mm -mm. have to. No, you don't. <laughs> Four to six weeks, and you can soak your feet even just in a dish pan at home. Or when you get out of the shower or the bath, 
do your feet right when you get out because everything's going to be nice and soft and gooey. So all those every two week pedicures, ladies. <laughs> no, my clients go four to six weeks, the regular clients. Mm -hmm. So what do you do for your long distance clients? Like, what do you suggest for your long distance clients? Um, some of them come every three months okay. and then in between all I want them to do is to trim their toenails mm -hmm. and put on the nail mycosis and that's it. Okay. Cause I don't well, want them. not to come up here during winter. Yeah, no, huh? <laughs> I'm not messing with you. You got no, the real you, you will be able to completely take care of your stuff at home. I have complete faith. Wait a minute, are your springtime still kind of like winter time up here? Um, it doesn't really get warm here until the end of April or the end of May. Okay. So. so pre summer feet, how about that? Mm hmm. Pre summer treatment. Oh, good. Now, that's the other thing I find difficult to try to paint my nails at home mm -hmm. from this angle. It's yeah. not always. So, what do you suggest um, the best way to do it when you're trying to sell? So I, I'll sit the bristles down and then see the little wiggle. Mm -hmm. When I wiggle, all the f bristles go out to the sides. Mm -hmm. So you're going to sit it and I'm pressing down. Mm -hmm. I know it might look like there's still skin in her sidewalls, but that's just the dust from the buffing that the cotton couldn't reach and it'll disappear as soon as we put on the cuticle oil. And if you're going to order nail polish today, don't forget to add the cuticle oil to your order as it's a very important step in preserving hydration and preventing dehydration. And I did make a nail polish course. Oh. Yes, where I teach all of the physics about the angle and the pressure and the speed mm -hmm. and the amount of polish and everything. So people want to look at that. <laughs> there actually is physics involved <laughs> when it comes to polishing nails. I believe that. <laughs> So last and final question. Yeah. So do you give your dogs pedicures? <laughs> yes, I do. You do. I do. Aww. One of them, I she gets groomed and they do her toenails, but the other two, I do their toenails. Really? Yep. And they're all different. The oldest buddy, he hates it, and even if I just take his paw, he goes. I'm like, I haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> Maya, she rolls her eyes at me, but she gives me her hand and she just sits so there. Funny. That's funny. Uh, so, 
Milky absolutely hates nail trimming. He will growl. Eyeballs, I can't see very well. Maybe, oh, that's my glasses. I got smears all over my glasses. I'm like, why is this blurry? 